You have to draw a line in the sand. You have to build some boundaries. Maybe I'm not the right one for it. Uh, I'm to a point where I don't want to try anymore. You are hurting yourself. This is something we see regularly. What is someone in your life fighting for? And how can you be there for them? So this next question, I'm sure many of you perhaps are familiar with the popular book that talks about that there's five love languages that people have. Mm -hmm. One of my biggest things, every time I hear the five love languages and they say to take the test, is I've always said, well, I don't want to just choose the two. I want to get all five of them. <laughs> Why should I have to choose my top two love languages? I want them all. But here's what the person's question is. They said, how do I get my husband to speak my love language? He feels that I'm trying to make him something he's not when I indicate my needs in our relationship. I have to confess, I've never read the book. <laughs> I, have no I haven't either. I just <laughs> know what the five of them are. I think what are they? They are physical touch, mm -hmm. quality time, mm -hmm. acts of service, mm -hmm. words of affirmation, mm -hmm. and gifts, mm -hmm. gift giving. And it's all supposed to fit within those five? Uh, yeah, exactly. So... We could probably do a whole part right now just about how there's more than that that we need. I mean, it may be an absolutely awesome book, but the first thing I'd say is I think there's a heck of a lot more than just those five. And why do I have to choose words of affirmation over gifts? I like right. them both. <laughs> okay. So let's just take your question and change it a little bit. What I'm hearing you say is there are some things I want him to do for me. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, but you're trying to make me be somebody that I'm not. Mm -hmm. So let's just leave it out of the love languages and yep. just put it down to that. Okay. Be careful that you actually aren't trying to make him be something that he's not. For example, if your husband's uh, one of these guys who's not very talkative, you know, he'll talk a little bit but not a lot. I'm thinking of a buddy of mine from years ago right now that if he said six words, it was a major conversation. But his wife, his wife was one of those personalities that just loved to talk and talk a lot. And so often he would just sit there while she just talked and talked and talked. And then she'd look at him like, your turn, because I need you to say these things. And he'd say like three words. It was not his nature to do so. But if you're saying, well, wait a minute, I need to hear those words. Okay. Then without trying to make him into somebody that he's not, because nobody wants that. Nobody wants to be that I've got to fit your criteria to be loved, whatever that criteria might be. I mean, you have to understand that I think the way I think, feel the way I feel, I believe the way I believe, I act the way I act. Please don't try to make me meet your criteria. Now, it doesn't mean then that, okay, there's no fixing this. There is, as long as you are willing to do some compromising. Say, so what do you mean? Number one, figure out what really is important to you at the core. Now, this words of affirmation, I'm not exactly sure how that's defined or described in the book, but let's just take that one for a minute. Well, take one even better, physical touch. I can illustrate that with Alice and me. Uh, my wife, Alice, came from a home where they hug for everything. I mean, they're just a hugging bunch of people. I came from a home where that um, my family hardly hugged for anything at all. As a matter of fact, I think maybe the last time my mother hugged me, I was like 12. And it's not because she doesn't love me, we just weren't a touchy-feely family. And so Alice and I got together, married each other, and she's like, huggy, huggy. <laughs> and my response was, that's not like I am. That's not who I am. Now, there had to be a compromise in between those two things. One, because saying that's not who I am didn't justify my not giving her what she needed. But at the same time, she needed to understand that I'm not going to be lovey, huggy, touchy every minute of every day. So her core was, give me enough physical touch where I feel secure and safe. My core was, I'm happy to do that as long as you understand and accept the fact that I'm not like that all the time. And so working from our core, we worked out a compromise. And I actually asked her, teach me to do what it is you want me to do, and then accept the fact that I'll do it as you've taught me, but it's not going to be as much as you want it. Now, you, if you start working out that kind of compromise, the next thing you do then is you start rewarding when you get what you want. You say, what? <laughs> it's behavior modification 101. It's way back to the, what you, if you went to the college, back to the first psychology class you had, or maybe a little later in the psychology, but behavior mod 101. You say, what's that? Whenever the other person does what you want, reward it. 
That's just it. Reward it. And so if you're wanting to be touched more, when he does touch you, give him some kind of reward. You say what? You have to figure out what it is that he wants, and you give him that. So let's say he likes to have his ego stroked a little bit. When he hugs you, it's like, man, there's nobody on earth that can hug like you do. Whatever it is that's important to him, that's what you give him back. Now, if you do that, you actually get more of the behavior because of the fact that he enjoys doing it because it did something for him as well. You say, but I don't want to train him like a seal. <laughs> we all train each other one way or the other, believe it or not. We know what the other person reacts positively to and what the other person reacts negatively to. So whatever it is that you want, first try to reach the compromise. Explain it to him, not in terms of you need to do this. People react badly to that, but in terms of here's something I need you to do for me. I'm not asking you to become a different person. I'm not asking you to do it all the time. I'm just saying here's some things I need. Let's talk about how you can do that at times that feel comfortable and good to you. Then establish that. And then whenever he does it, knowing what's important to him, whatever it might be, reward him somehow. For example, and I'll quit, I'm rambling a little now, but let's say his favorite thing is homemade peach pie, the way they made it back in the old days. I mean, where it was a pound of peaches, a pound of butter, a pound of sugar, and a pound of flour. Which is literally my grandmother's recipe. Which is literally <laughs> your grandmother's recipe. Then, then when he does something like you really want, next meal, you got that great peach, peach pie there for him. And he says, is there a special occasion? You say, nope. I just love the way you've been loving me lately. That's the way you encourage the behavior. Encourage the behavior. First the compromise, then the reward. Now, I'm giving you just the principle. And as Kimberly often points out, we're giving you the 80%, mm -hmm. but... But there's the extra 20% that is situationally specific. And so... If that's where you are, where you're saying, I get that in principle, but I still can't figure out how to apply it to my specific situation because of whatever reason, then that is why we have our coaches who can work with you one-on-one -on -one or as a couple. And wherever you are in the world, they do it by phone. Um, people from Dubai to Germany to Canada to Hawaii, I mean, our, our clients are international. So we can help you with that extra 20% because you really don't, what you don't want to do is get it wrong. You don't want to just hear it and interpret it maybe in a way that we didn't mean it and then end up implementing something that's going to make things worse than better. Now we try, and I think we do a great job, of explaining things to where you're not going to do that, but there's still such value in a non-biased third-party person who's going to be supportive, who's going to walk you through this, both of you or just you as an individual, and it's absolutely priceless. So that's mm -hmm. what our coaching is for. We'd love to have you if that's something you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So maybe what you do with what I just talked about is sit down and make a list. This is the way I want to demonstrate it. Make a list of, this is what he really wants. Start off with a list. Try it on your own. If it works great, you don't need to call us for those coaching. If you try it and it's not working, we've got people that will help you with it. Yeah. In other words, we don't think we have to tell you everything to do in life. We know that you have wisdom and you have insight. But sometimes you just get stuck. You try it and it's not working. But first of all, try it on your own. And if you can make that work, great. Send us an email and tell us that it did. As a matter of fact, I'd love to start reading on this program emails from people to say, hey, I heard you guys suggest blank. Yeah. I did this. Let me tell you what happened. We'd love to share some of those things. Yeah. But if it doesn't, call us. We'll help you with it. Yeah. But if it does, let us hear about it. And, you know, this is a great time to let you know that if you have something you want to submit, whether it's a question or it's a testimony or if it's something you've tried that you've learned here that you want to share with us and you want us to be able to share, we're going to do some really cool stuff with that with things that we get that, that we'll talk about at a later show, but you can email us. There's a special email just for all of you, and that's askjoe, A-S-K-J-O-E, at marriagehelper.com. And you can send in those questions, those testimonies, those just success, small victories. We want to celebrate those small victories with you as well and encourage others with it. If you have been married longer than a minute, then you know that they're... <laughs> There are hard times in marriage, and there's great times in marriage, and it's so rewarding when you are able to share even the smallest of victories with people who are going to celebrate with you, because marriage is hard, but doing it together, having a community of people who are going to support you in it, 
makes a huge difference. So ask Joe, A-S-K-J-O-E at marriagehelper.com. We'd love to get that stuff, use them for the, our upcoming shows. Excellent. That sounds good to me, and we'd love to hear from you. Absolutely. All right.